Do you think it's getting better? I think it might get better. I think it might at least, at least, at least create works, I think, that we're, we could I, you know, think more about how we're living and why we're living this way. Um, uh, I think that, I think that. Um, you find a lot of, um, a lot of interesting films being, being shown now, I think, in the past year, pretty interesting, I thought. I mean, I hope, I, I, I think there's some hope for that, but the, the situation we're in now in terms of uh, the world situation. Well, um, just one thing. Uh, back when you were studying films or, or going to them in your own way, it, it took an effort. It was, it was a, a commitment, in a way, to go see a film. Now you can stay home. I know. You can, you can call it up on your computer. I know. You can just it's amazing. Watch some kids who are watching my computer. I mean, I you had to it. learn. When you, if you wanted to borrow something from somebody else, you had to go back and watch it over and yeah. over again. You no, when we saw these films two or three times, we followed them in theaters. You know, we'd go, hey, it's playing over there next week, quick, and we'd run, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, but I, I found, too, that you never know, because um, there's no doubt the form is changing mm -hmm. with digital video. Uh, but you never know, because a number of the films that I, 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 I uh, two or three major of them, major films for me, I was exposed to them on television. They were shown twice a night on Million Dollar Movie, mm -hmm. all week, twice a night. Yankee Doodle Dan. Well, no, it was uh, <laughs> Citizen Kane. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, cut, by the way. The whole March of Time sequence out, you know. So when I saw it in the theater, I said, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a movie. So <laughs> Citizen Kane, Force of Evil by Abe Polanski, mm -hmm. and uh, Tales of Hoffman, Paul Pressburger. Uh, films by, uh, films by, yeah, Tales of Hoffman was cut down, black and white, these things. And my mother would yell from the kitchen, you watch it. <laughs> yeah, turn that off. You know, so, so, but, so in a sense, the repetition of viewing mm -hmm. that seemed to be, that was the, that, I guess that's the closest analogy I can make, that you had something you knew was going to be on twice that night, that particular film. And maybe, I don't know, I, I became obsessed with those three and watched them. Yeah. Well, put them to good use. I hope. <laughs> um, so there you are. It's 1976 or so. You and Jay have, have the script coming along. And then how, why did it take so long to get to this um, by the time we got around to it, it was, um, I think our first hope was, I'm, I'm, I was thinking about this in the weekend when you asked me this, I said, first hope we had, I think, was Paramount Pictures, Bob Evans um, at the time. Francis Coppola was a, a big champion of me and helped me out a lot at that time. And uh, Jay was friends with um, uh, the number of people there. So um, when we presented the idea to uh, the head of Paramount at the time, was Bob Evans, he had just released a film called The Molly Maguires. Mm -hmm. Sean Connery. Sean Connery and Richard Harris, uh, Marty Ritt film. It was, it was quite good, but if, for some reason it just didn't make it. It just didn't make it at the, at the box office. And so um, uh, our plans were, you know, gone. And um, uh, at that time, uh, you know, the Italian cinema was still extraordinary. Bertolucci and everybody working under Weren't you by then in a position where you could say, look, I, here's what I just did and, and now I'd like to take a chance? Uh, at that time, I, I just done Mean I just did Mean Streets at that point. So, uh, in fact, I think that meeting with Bob Evans was before Mean Streets. Yeah. I think. I think right. we wanted to develop it, but in that case, but I think, I think no. It was really a matter of budget. It was too big. It was far too big, and all none of the sets existed. You see, New York of uh, uh, the period that Herbert Asbury was writing about doesn't exist really anymore. It really doesn't. Um, uh, I made it very clear in this film that they wear stovepipe hats, no bowl, no bowler hats, no derbies. That came in, for me, it's a split with the Civil War yeah. and after that. So uh, a lot of the buildings I have in the film are based on uh, etchings and engravings, but also some of the old buildings were on their way down by the time Jacob Reese was photographing in the 1870s. But I try to stay away Did from as much red brick. Did you always think that you had to recreate New York that fully totally, to do yeah. this? Totally, oh, yeah. There's no way yeah, to there's suggest no it. Yeah, there's no way. No, even then, there was no way to suggest it. Right. And then um, uh, there was a possibility of doing it in Italy. Uh, not in Italy, but uh, with Italian at that point, Bertolucci and, uh, was working with uh, PEA and they were making wonderful films. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the time I did New York, New York, um, and then sort of careened into Raging Bull, uh, after, by the time Raging Bull came out, it was nine days or ten days before Heaven's Gate from the same studio. Mm -hmm. And then that, that changed everything, you know. So it just changed everything. It just changed everything. And it, it's got some extraordinary things in Heaven's Gate. It's just extraordinary looking at the sequences in that film. Some beautiful things. And, um, but I think it just ended the period where uh, one could get involved, I think, in a picture that is already a 160-page script, 150-page script, and then you go on and keep shooting and keep shooting and keep shooting and make it for five hours so. with the Bertolucci di Novecento, you see. So that's... So the thing was put... So then you had rest. to table it for a while. Yeah, 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 I tabled it. And every now and then we talk about it and bring it out. And uh, I think, oh, yeah, we had another resurgence of hope 
when uh, Warner Brothers uh, liked Goodfellas, when they saw the rough cut and they liked it and they, they wanted to do something, we said, we think we could really do this picture and uh, we rewrite the script, uh, and, uh, which is what we did. And mind you, I kept, we, work, we kept working on it and, and finally um, uh, Warner Brothers didn't feel strongly about that either because again, um, it's just too much. Uh, at the time too, at the time too, reflected another period, uh, period post Peckinpah violence, mm -hmm. in a sense, of the 70s, which uh, is somewhat changed in terms of uh, uh, certain kinds of films. So. Um, I think those are the elements that uh, got us right. holding the picture up for many years until, um, until uh, 1999.